Greetings to all of you in the name of our Lord and our Savior. Again, it is a great blessing to be in the house of God for this Thursday night teaching sponsored by the Cathedral Broadcast. And we want to just thank you for tuning in and making this your place of sanctuary on tonight where you can both hear and receive the unadulterated and uncompromised word of God. Shall we go before the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing upon our study for tonight? Father God of heaven, we're so thankful again for giving us yet another opportunity to share your word. And Father, as I come along with your people that's watching via uh, this social media platform all over this world, I pray that you would bring us together with one mind and one spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in this teaching. We ask now, God, that everything that's said and done be ushered out by the power of God so that your will may be accomplished in our life. This is our earnest prayer in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen and amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we want to begin a teaching or a study on three words. And those three words are enthusiasm, <clears throat> determination, and vision. <clears throat> Let me say that again. Enthusiasm, determination, and vision. I want to give us a spiritual perspective on these three words and I'm going to be believing God that he will minister great truths to you and what is not said to you through my lips or that comes off from my paper study that the Holy Spirit will speak to you in this area of enthusiasm in term determination and vision the first word I want to tackle is enthusiasm and basically when I say enthusiasm I'm asking you are you excited are you excited about God are you excited about the things of God are you excited about obedience to the Lord and the vision and the plan and the and the direction and the ministry that God has laid out for you the question that I must ask you is are you excited and this pictures enthusiasm let me ask a couple of questions to you to further my thought. Every one of us need to be able to answer these questions. The first question is, what is it that excites you? What is it that excites you? What causes me or what causes you to reach for higher? What is it that makes you want to do more and be more? The reason why we need to ask ourselves this, those questions is because our excitement propels our determination. Now write that down or type it in on, this, on your screen in your comment section. Excitement propels determination. If you can't get excited about something, you will not ever reach a place of determination. <clears throat> Getting excited about God helps you stay enthusiastic about your goals for God, your vision, your direction. And beloved, the real difference between winners and losers is really just one thing, enthusiasm. How much do you love what you're doing? How excited do you get when you're doing 
what you're doing for the Lord. The thing that will determine if you'll be a winner and or loser is your ability to become or be enthusiastic about that which you are involved in. Don't simply assume things can't be done. Be enthusiastic about God's divine way making ability. Because when you get excited about God, God will get excited about forging and forming a way and making a way for you. Oh, yes. Yes. <clears throat> you better believe it. That devil will often remind us of our failures and particularly our past failures. He'll do these things to try to afflict our minds and incarcerate our thoughts because his ultimate aim is to crush your enthusiasm. He does that by getting you depressed or discouraged. But if you can remain enthused about God and the things of God, Satan will not be able to stamp out your joy. I want you to consider Colossians chapter number 3 and verse number 23 for our scripture of study when we talk about enthusiasm. Are you ready? Read with me. Whatsoever you do, whatever you do, he says, do it heartily. Now, that word heartily involves a lot of things. It involves giving God your best. It involves doing it with all your might. It is, involves your concentration. It involves your focus. It involves your attention. And so the idea here is that whatever we're doing for God, we ought to give it all we got. Now listen to the phraseology he says, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto man. And the reason why we are to do things unto the Lord and not unto man is because when you do things for man and you don't get the right response or you don't get the appreciation that you're looking for, you will become depressed and dis. Encouraged. But when you do things with only the mindset of pleasing God and doing it because it brings honor to God, it makes no difference whether you are applauded or lauded or you are, you are lifted up or not. It makes no difference. Why? Because your mindset is whatever I'm doing and I'm doing it for the Lord. So he says to us in the book of Colossae, Paul writes the church at Colossae and Paul writes these words, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord and not unto man. If you continue reading, it says, knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive a reward. Listen, beloved, can't nobody pay you for what you're doing like the Lord. We're doing it for eternal life. We're doing it to be with him. We're not doing it to have a pat on the back by man because the pat on the back is temporal. But eternal life with God, in God, is perpetual and forever. So when the enemy comes to try to crush our enthusiasm, let's remember that whatever we do, we do it unto the Lord and not unto man. We've got to remember how important it is to have the right perspective. Do you remember what Charles Swindoll wrote concerning perspective? Another word for perspective would be attitude. Here's what he said. He says, life is 10% what happens to you. And then it is 90% of how you react to what happened. Life is 10% what happens. But the other 90% is how you react to what happened 
to you. In other words, don't let disappointments, don't let rejections, don't let losses, don't let failures, don't let problems, don't let situations, don't let circumstances, etc. And the list goes on. Don't let anything steal your joy. Nehemiah says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be happy in God, you want to be excited about the things of God, it will require joy. And if you are to be strong, it will require joy. Don't let anything steal your joy. Whatever you do, Colossians 3 and 23, do it as unto the Lord and not unto man because only God can pay you for what you have done. Listen, beloved, be enthused and be enthusiastic and always keep reaching, stretching forward, clinging on to the things that God would have you to do. Stretch out on God because failure is never final. When you're enthusiastic, failure is never final. The second word I want to speak with you tonight is about determination. We spoke about being enthused, being enthusiastic, but now we want to talk about determination. And by determination, I mean be able to stick to it. Someone said, stick and stay. Have the ability not to be a quitter. Look at Luke chapter number 9 and verse number 22. It reads as thus, no one after putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. No one that don't have a spirit of determination is able or is worthy of standing in the annals of heaven and enjoying the glories of heaven. We can't make it if we are not determined. If we can't stick to it, if we can't stay with it, we don't understand what it means to serve God. So he says to us, nobody putting their hand to the plow and looks back is worthy. Now, those of you that's from the country, for me, you know that if you are behind a plow and you're plowing, if you're looking back, what's going to happen to the row in front of you? It will not be straight. It will be crooked and jagged and going different directions. But to plow, you have to remain focused on the task at hand, and you've got to be looking forward, press forward towards the mark of the high call that's in Christ Jesus. You got to press forward and you got to stay behind the plow and guide the plow and ensure that you're plowing a straight line. It takes determination to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, never get tired. Never, never get tired of doing the things God would have you to do. Determination is what allows you and allows me to see things through. It allows us not to just start, but it allows us to finish what we start. It allows us and gives us the ability to avoid being a selective Christian, picking and choosing the things that we find favorable to do. But what being determined means, whatever our hands find to do, we do it hardly unto the Lord. We're not trying to just pick certain things that we like. We're just trying to accomplish the whole will of God. And also, when you are determined, it will allow you to serve God not based on comfort or not based on convenience whatever it is God calls you to do or has you to do you are down for the cause let's consider Galatians number 6 and verse number 9 to truly understand what it means to be determined are you there read with me let us not get tired. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to be careful not to become a tired church, not to become a weary church. 
Let us not be weary of well-doing. Let us not get tired of doing what is right. For after a while, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't get discouraged and give up. I need you to type in. Hang on in there. Hang on in there. Don't you give up. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't you stop doing. Don't you stop living. Don't you stop giving. Don't you stop sharing. Don't you stop loving. But just hang on in there. Let us not get weary in well-doing. Don't get weary in, in your marriage. Don't get weary in loving your enemies. Keep on loving them. Keep on doing right, even when people do you wrong. Don't get weary in well-doing, for after a while we will reap the harvest of blessings if we don't give up. Brothers and sisters, determination is a mindset. It is an attitude. It will keep you fresh on godly pursuits. It will keep your mind where it needs to be. When we consider, when we consider the oak tree, we, we gain a real appreciation and understanding of what it means to be determined. Because ladies and gentlemen, an oak tree is nothing but an acorn that refused to give up. Let me say it again. An oak tree is nothing but an acorn that refused to give up. Are you an oak tree? Because if you're an oak tree today, it's because you were an acorn that just wouldn't give up, that wouldn't get weary and well done, that wouldn't quit, that didn't get tired and throw up your hands, but you kept on keeping on glory to God I believe that there are some acorns watching me on television this night and this evening I believe that you're listening in this audience and you're being encouraged because you understand that I was an acorn and now I'm an oak tree and the reason why I'm an oak tree is because I did not get weary in well-doing. No matter what happens to me, no matter what I went through, no matter the discouragement, no matter the letdowns, no matter being ostracized, no matter being hated, no matter being despised and rejected, I did not give up. Great Christians aren't always super talented. Rather, they are regular people who have the ability to stick and stay glory be to God go ahead and type in stick and stay be determined be determined now let's go to my last point vision a lot is being said and has been said about vision but vision is critical to your walk with God and by vision, I mean having the ability to see it before you see it. Vision, having the ability to see it before I see it. Look at Proverbs chapter number 29 and verse number 18. It reads as thus, where there is no vision, the people perish. You can't go anywhere if you don't see something. You can't lead a people to a place if you don't see it. You can't rise to a new level if you can't see it. The common denominator for greatness is the ability is to see where you are going despite your situation or position. You have to have the ability to understand that sometimes where you're at is nothing but a lie lying on you trying to keep you at a lower level than the higher level that God is taking you on. Vision is the eyes of faith. Type that into your comment. Vision is my eyes to faith. Vision is the eyes to faith. Vision releases your faith in the atmosphere and that God can go forth and do great things in front of you. It allows your spirit to perceive what is not visible to your natural eyes and what's not 
touchable to your human hands or what's not heard with your natural ears. Vision allows your faith to be released in the atmosphere. Martin Luther King Jr. saw days of equality that inspired people to march for equality before it even happened. His message caused others to be mobilized into movements of equality until it arrived. His message was, I have a dream. Do you have a dream, beloved? Are you still determined that God's going to do everything that he said he was going to do? Do you believe that God has called you to be and called you to be enthusiastic about his way and his will? Do you believe that he's given you a vision for such a time as this? Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. The dream was the instrument of causing people to see it before they experienced it. Today, we are enjoying the comforts and the blessings of freedoms for things that we did not earn. Somebody else died. Somebody else was beaten. Somebody else went through movements of equality so that we could enjoy equality to the degree that we enjoy it today. What is it that you see that God is doing in your life? What is it that you see that God has promised to do in your life? Do you, do you see yourself reaching higher? Do you see yourself stretching beyond your current border? Do you see yourself rising do you see yourself expanding whatever it is you must see it before you see it ladies and gentlemen vision is an extraordinary gift I want you to remember that vision is an extraordinary gift. You know, you can delegate details, you can supervise administration, you can strategize financials, and you can even manage an organization. However, you can't delegate vision. Vision is something unique in itself, all by itself, because it comes from God. And it separates you from the average. It separates you from the status quo. And it separates you from the ordinary. And it moves you above the routine. Amen. And amen. Three things I want you to remember in this teaching. Enthusiasm. Are you excited? about the things of God determination do you have what it takes to see it to the end can you stick and stay and then lastly vision do you see it before you see it. You've been watching the cathedral broadcast where we walk by faith and not by sight, a place where Jesus is real. Stay tuned. My son is coming to lead those to the Lord that have not made a decision to trust him as Savior and also give you the opportunity to return back to this way of holiness if you've walked away. May God bless you and may he keep you and may his peace be upon you. Shalom and amen. At this time, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, or maybe you've stepped away and need to renew your relationship with him, I invite you to say the prayer of salvation or recite it after me. Dear Lord, I admit that I am a sinner. I have done many things that don't please you. I have lived my life for myself only and I am sorry and I repent. I ask you to forgive me. I believe that you died on the cross for me to save me. 
You did what I could not do for myself. And I come to you now and ask you to take control of my life. I give it to you. From this day forward, help me to live each day for you and in a way that pleases you. I love you, Lord, and I thank you. And I will spend all of eternity with you. Amen. If you said those words and recited those words after me, congratulations, you are saved. Now, I would encourage you, if you're here local, to join the Greater Reynolds Cathedral, a place where Jesus is real. Or maybe you're far. We invite you to become an e-member. Or there may be a ministry that's in the area where you are, but regardless of where you decide to join, I encourage you to become a part of a ministry where you can not only learn and grow, but encourage others to do the same that you have done. Thank you for tuning in to the Greater Realness Broadcast, brought to you by the Greater Realness Cathedral. Be blessed.